What's up, y'all? Got a banger from the wall. Let's get straight into it. Mothers don't break, but they're broken right now. We are constantly on top of our kids because that is a societal expectation that we have to intensively parent our children at the expense of our own mental health. And we also have to be completely on as workers. Again, we're in this hustle culture where you're constantly driving, driving, driving at work. And so if you're a working woman, you have these two huge expectations that you basically have to meet and it's exhausting. And it's why we have a mental health crisis. 51% of mothers say that they're anxious and depressed. The CDC released a study saying that the subgroup that is suffering the most anxiety and depression are you know, working women. You're seeing this in the UK. It's an alcoholism, Adderall addiction. It is on the rise, rising suicide rates of mothers. We're supposed to be martyrs essentially, or have it all together. And so there's no outlet for us. You know, I say in my book, when working women make a list, it's like their kids, you know, their partner, their pet, and then themselves. We are last on the list. We do no self-care. And society doesn't expect that we, we should be doing it. It's seen as being a bad mom or being selfish when we spend time on ourselves. Man, I, I don't know, man. I think if you're going to have kids... Loki, go to your place. Go to your place. I think if you're going to have kids, you have to be ready to put yourself second. You got to put your kids first. That's like the worst thing you could do is be a selfish parent. And the thing is... Get into a relationship where you think you're going to be able to provide the most nurturing environment for your children. If that's the man goes out and provides and you stay home and raise the kids, great. If you guys can't get to that point, in my opinion, don't have kids if you're not ready. If you're not ready to sacrifice a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of doing things that maybe you don't want to do, like you're going to be ready for, to sacrifice that. It's called having a child, being an adult. I'm just like, with this lady, I mean, I kind of get it, like the hustle culture and things like that, but like feminism, y'all wanted that. That's what y'all wanted. Y'all wanted equality. Well, equal rights, equal lefts. And that's just how it is. Like, like the working market isn't fun. Corporate America is not a, not a, a bunch of sunshine and rainbows. But that's what y'all wanted. But the thing is, is if you're going to be a mother, you need to be a nurturing mother. Kids get a lot out of that in their developmental years, you know, from birth to five. So I, it's, it's really hard to feel bad for someone that chose to lay in bed with somebody and then have a kid. It's really hard to have sympathy and empathy. Let me know in the comments. Do you have sympathy for people that have kids and they're like, but I'm so burdened by having the child, so burdened by being a parent, then why'd you have a kid? Stupid. If you weren't ready. <laughs> the biggest consumers of antidepressants in this country are women, and those who attend therapy the most are women. In recent years, cannabis use among women has also increased. That's crazy. Women weren't supposed to take on everything, but with an 80% divorce rate, which can rise to 90% if they are professionals, where does that leave us? In a broken family unit where children are at a greater disadvantage than children of tired parents. And, and, yeah, no, exactly that part. But also when kids don't get the, the TLC, the tender love and care, the time and attention that they should get from these parents, they turn out to be degenerates. I've showed you guys this study multiple times. I won't pull it up this episode, but I've, I've talked about it in previous episodes. Literally. 60 to 80% of all degenerates in society come from fatherless homes. Women that have to work, they have to provide, and they're not there to actually provide that nurturing, loving environment. But the thing is, that's what y'all wanted. And it's so, it's, so, it's so hard for me, because as men, we understand this. Nobody's coming to save us. Nobody's gonna help us. It's really all on us. And so it's hard to feel bad for someone that wanted something and got it, and then they're mad that they got it. It's like, huh? But I thought you wanted that. I thought that's what you guys were fighting for. But I will say inflation's kind of a, a beast right now. Inflation's an absolute beast. Like back in the day, our parents could afford a home on like, you know, a $60,000, $60,000 salary, which that was a good salary back in the day. But nowadays you gotta, you gotta make like 110 grand to afford a regular schmegular house. It's crazy. I was 26 and fell immediately into poverty. Okay, when I lived with my parents, I was living my best luxury lifestyle. I went to South Korea, bought a 2000 plane ticket, didn't even blink twice. I went shopping, luxury goods, all that. Was traveling, was just, oh, I was living it up. I felt rich. I had no bills. And I had a full-time nine to five job. I was working as a nurse, okay? I was killing it. I bought my own house. That first mortgage payment came in and I was like, oh, this is a situation. But at first you think you can handle it, right? Like, you know, what's, what's a couple thou? was a couple thou. I got it. But then the pipes in my 80 year old home broke immediately as soon as I that's, bought that Dude, house. that's why you don't buy an 80 year old home. 
<laughs> you always got to remember, if, if the price is too good, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Me and Cass bought a home, but we bought a brand new home. But the thing is, we bought it in a small town. 200 IQ move. Because the thing is, if you want to invest in real estate, it's about how much you can own. And if you want to live in a big city, you got to be ready to spend half a million dollars. And unless you're making biggity bankroll, you're not going to be able to afford that. So here's my advice to you guys. You want to invest in real estate, you want to buy a home, get a job where you can work remote. Hopefully your girl can too, or your partner or whoever. Maybe it's your buddy, maybe it's your friend, whatever. Go live in a small town for two years and eat poop. Eat crap for two years and be like, you know what, this sucks. I don't want to really be here. This isn't where I want to be forever. This is what we're doing literally right now. Living, living in a small town where the cost of living is extremely low, the mortgage payment's extremely low, we're able to save a ton of money because what we're doing, it, it, we, we literally isolated ourselves from our friends and like our family. Well, some of Cass's family is, is from here, but we isolated ourselves from like our core friend group. So I have like no distractions. Nobody's hitting me up to come play pickleball. Nobody's hitting me up to go out to the bar. Nobody's hitting me up to go out to dinner. Everybody knows I'm hours away. So we're able to get years ahead by sacrificing a lot. So it's something you guys should do. You either have to suffer now or suffer later. So it's really up to you. We chose to suffer now. Wiped out my savings. Then another pipe in a different area of the house broke. Okay, that's, I'm struggling. Okay, I need help. Then my neighbor's pipe, it was a twin house. Her pipe broke. Mm. And she didn't believe that her pipe broke. But her pipe broke on my side of the house. So all of that water that was coming down was spraying into my home. And then my water heater broke. When I tell y'all, I went from living in the lap of luxury to destitute immediately. Now, don't get me to fooling y'all because it was worth it in the long run because that house is now worth like two times what it was worth then. So I'm actually doing pretty good. But at the time, when I tell you I was struggling, I had to go to my parents every other day for dinner because whew, your girl could not feed herself. You're just unlucky. The yeah, I mean, well, that's the thing. She is unlucky. And at the end of the day, don't buy an 80-year-old home. For me, if I was buying a home, I'm looking like 1960s, 1970s at the absolute latest. Maybe that is 80 years. Man, my math is really bad. Oh, that's like 60 years. But I would never buy a home that was built in 1930. Bro, absolutely not. You do not want to buy a house that was built in 1930. That is a really, really bad idea. Because <laughs> you're going to have a lot of problems. You're going to have plumbing issues. You're going to have AC issues. You're going to do everything. It's, it's a horrible idea. What needs to do well, it's this one. Uh oh, this uh oh, here's the crying. Financial wall. Here comes daddy to the rescue. There's one video of mine that needs to do well, it's this one. This is the first month I won't be able to afford rent. I'm not a rich person. I don't have a lot of stuff. <laughs> Let's break this down. It looks like she has a sectional couch. I'm gonna go ahead and say 1200, 1500 bucks. Plant, if it's real, maybe 60, 70 bucks. If it's fake, maybe even more. Uh, artwork on the wall, probably 20 to 40 bucks per. So, you know, 60, 100 bucks. You know, another 200, $1,000 couch, a little side table. She's wearing clothes. She's got a necklace on. I'm looking at about 1500 to $1,700 right now that you could have probably saved. I almost biggity bet you there is a TV on that wall. She probably has a nice bedroom set. Like, like, you, you, you could have a futon, honey. Stuff I have basic household necessities, a couch, a bed, washer, a dryer. That's about it. A car. That's about it. That's a lot. What, what are you talking about? I don't have a lot of lavish things. I don't go on vacations and I, I don't spend a lot. Rents increased from 1300 to 1800 The food prices are too high. I've cut back on eating because I literally cannot afford food. What about your phone bill? Stupid. <laughs> That's probably a hundred dollars a month. What about your internet? Like, go to a coffee shop. I just, I, it's so hard to feel bad for these people because like, and here's my thing. In your life, stop focusing on the problems. Start focusing on the possible solutions. Because if you just focus on the problems, you're always going to be worried about what's going on that's wrong. Well, this is happening, and this sucks, and, you know, I can't afford anything. I can't go out to eat. And It's these girls that are trying to live the same lifestyle they were living when they were living with their parents. Being able to go out, blow money, have fun with their friends. It doesn't happen anymore unless you want to go out there and get a credit card. But you could do a lot. St don't live in a $1,300 a month apartment. Go live in a $900 a month a a studio. Why do you need a one-bedroom apartment? Go get a studio. So I don't... I hate excuses. I hate excuses. 
You know, losers make excuses and winners make it happen. And excuses are like buttholes. Everybody's got one and they're all brown. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, excuses are like buttholes and everybody's got one and they all stink. That's the phrase. Cut back on my favorite snacks, cat food, treats. I'm exhausted all the time from being overworked and underpaid. You don't catch a break when you're when you grow up poor. I don't need much to be happy. I just want to be able to live comfortable. I just really need to catch a break right now. I'm trying so hard and I feel like I'm not doing enough. I don't have family. I don't have anything to fall back on. I just need one video to blow up and it could be life changing for me. Cocaine is a hell of a drug. <laughs> Look at what women resort to these days when daddy cuts off their allowance. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. This woman is out here crying online about not having enough time to do things. Dude, here's the thing. A lot, there's a lot of men. Let me know. Let me know in the comments. How many of you guys have two jobs? How many of you guys work a nine to five and then do like a five to nine? How many of you guys are that watch the channel work a nine to five or work a job 10 to 12 hours a day or work a nine to five and then are trying to start your own business? Like there's a lot of us guys out there. Nobody's got sympathy for us. I work a nine to five and then do the YouTube from five to nine. I'm working all the time. Do I miss time with family? Yes. Do I not get to watch TV? No, I don't get to watch TV. Do I get to just hang out and watch YouTube for hours? No, I don't. I create content. I go to work. I work my butt off and I get a lot out of it. Women aren't built for this though. Like this stuff is hard. And there's a lot of you guys like that are blue collar workers. We've got a lot of truck drivers that watch. Shout out to you guys stocking the shelves. We've got a lot of like construction guys. We've got a lot of guys that work outside all the time. Like shout out to all you guys. Those are really hard jobs. Ladies, you feel like you work hard, go work for a construction company for two hours and then tell me you work hard. If you're inside and you can work from home and you work under fluorescent light bulbs, you're not working hard. You're just not getting paid enough because your job's easy. Can I vent to y'all just real quick? Um, I'm tired of being a homeowner. I am tired of being a homeowner. I'm tired of people telling me owning a home is the best investment you could ever have. It's only a good investment if you want to invest in real estate. If you don't want to invest in real estate and like own a portfolio, I don't think it's a good idea for a lot of people. If I do believe that to be true. That don't change the fact that I'm tired of being a homeowner. I'm tired of the problems that it come with. I'm tired of all the responsibility, you know, hanging on my shoulders. I miss renting. Then rent. I miss renting. I feel like I had more freedom with renting. Now I know when you rent, you're paying month to month and all that money is going down the drain. It's not going towards nothing. It's not investing in nothing. It's not, I know that. And I don't care. I, I thought about it so much. Selling my house and going back to live with my mother. Because why not? I don't have kids. I don't have a man. I don't have any drama that I would bring my mama. And I can pay all her bills. This my is what we would call in the industry a daughter wife. <laughs> a daughter wife. Similar to the son husband. We'll get into that in a minute. Dude, my mama still living the projects in income-based housing. She doesn't pay rent anyway. We'll be over there living like kings and queens. <laughs> Jesus Christ. The, I feel like the only thing that I would miss owning my home or, you know, moving back with my mom or just whatever is the privacy. I do not like people all the time. I do not like noise, you know. But when you move in with somebody or any sort of living adjustment, then you have to understand what that comes with. You know what I'm saying? And... I'm just tired. Not saying that I will go live back with my mama. Not saying that I will go back renting. Not saying that I'll get a roommate. You know, all those things is an option. I'm just tired of being a homeowner. I'm tired of the issues that arise. And I look left and I look right. And the responsibility is still on you. Like, there's just no help. I'm so tired. Owning a this is why I say these women, you shouldn't buy a home unless you got a man, boo-boo. You need a man. Who? What's What's going to happen when the toilet backs up? You going to clean up the dookie? The dookie sludge? You going to do that? What happens when there's bugs on the house? You, you going to go get the bugs? You going to spray the house with bugs? What, what, what about the mowing the yard? You going to go get out there and mow the yard? What about somebody scary tries to break in your house? You going to defend yourself? Y'all don't want to do that. Stop buying homes without men. I've talked about this in previous episodes. There needs to be a common progression for the way that you move through your life. You shouldn't, as a woman, buy a cat, you're rooting yourself in your singleness. Buy a home, rooting yourself in your singleness. 
buy your first car, like do everything that you're typically supposed to do in a relationship, have a kid without a man. Stop doing that. It makes you more alone. Going back to my point earlier of the daughter wife, a lot of these women are doing that these days. They can't afford to pay rent. They can't afford to live on their own anymore. So they go move back in with their parents and they become a daughter wife or, um, you know, a son husband. And these daughter wives will go live with their mom and basically play cupcake Barbie house and be wives to each other. And they're like, you bring in your part of the rent. I bring in my part of the rent. We're city girls. And then like, they're like friends with their moms, which is horrible. And like, I don't think you should ever be friends with your parents. You should have a common respect, but like friendly parents raise bad kids. Let me know in the comments what you think. Do you think friendly parents raise really productive kids? All the cool parents that I knew, a lot of the kids, the majority of the kids turned out to be awful kids. They're disrespectful, they're degenerates, they're druggies. They don't have their head on straight. They're not hard workers, they're entitled. You know what I mean? So daughter wives is one, but also son husbands. A son husband is a guy who lives with his mom and he stays with his mom because she's sick or she's elderly and she doesn't have a man. And then the mom brainwashes the son to say, well, you can't leave me. Who's gonna be here to help me? Well, I'm sickly, you can't leave. You'll see this a lot, dude. You'll see it a lot. These women brainwash these men into thinking they need to stay with their mom and basically fill in that husband role. But they're a son husband. Daughter wife's the same thing. You don't see you don't see a lot of um, daughter wives that uh, daughters that live with their dad. You don't see that a ton, but you do see a lot of son husbands. Let me know in the comments. Do you know any daughter wives or son husbands? Let me know. Let's get back to it. Home. I don't give a damn. Owning a home is not what it used to be. I used to take pride. And owning a home. I want to sell my home bad. Then sell your house. Stupid. What are you talking about? Like, this is crazy to me. Sell your crib. You don't want to own a home. Sell your crib, dude. It's really that simple. It's not hard. Move into a new apartment. So how is she going to... So this girl needs $4,000 by next month so she can move into her new apartment. Damn. So how is she going to get the money? TikTok roses from live. Watch. So I need to come up with $4,000 by April 20th in order to secure a cheaper apartment that I'm looking into. They want $250 per cat for a pet deposit. Why do I have three cats? Oh my God. Stupid. <sighs> Talking about, I, I'm hurting with money. Why do you have three cats? <laughs> oh. Money for the application fee already. I saw someone else do this on um, TikTok. Uh, here's a hack for you guys though. If you don't want to pay a um, pet deposit, you can register your uh, cat or dog as an emotional support animal, not like a not like the ones that actually like do anything, but like an emotional support animal, and then you don't have to pay a pet deposit for them. So, some food for thought for you guys. Talk with their student debt. She went live, and everybody donated roses, and she was able to pay off twenty thousand dollars in student debt. Jeez. I think one rose counts as a dollar, so if I get four thousand roses, just, just begging on TikTok. You you can't make this stuff up. Begging, just be like somebody would be begging on the street. I can move into my apartment. That is more affordable. Do I think this is going to work? Absolutely not. But am I going to try it? Yeah, because I'm out of ideas. Now, one would think that this wouldn't work, right? Wrong. This actually did work. This was me just looking at her live recently, and she is getting showered with roses left and right. Now, what makes that even more impressive is the fact that she posted that video yesterday, and already it has over 24 million views wow. and over 1.2 million likes. So I had a good feeling that she was going to get roses, but I don't think anybody saw this coming. And I really think she started a movement on TikTok, because now we see other people on TikTok doing the exact same thing. This might be the NPC trend of 2024. But of course, this trend does come with criticisms. People are saying this is a form of cyber begging. Others are also wondering why we should pay this stranger money when we ourselves cannot afford to do anything ourselves. That's what I'm saying. But I am very curious to hear what your thoughts are. What are your thoughts to sending money to people on TikTok who need to pay off their debts? Are you for it? Are you against it? Against and would you do it, it yourself? Let me know in the comments we'll below. Never do it. And if you like this video, make sure to share this with friends and give me a follow. You're, you're, you're literally cyber begging, dude. Yeah. It's pathetic. It's absolutely pathetic absolutely pathetic getting online just begging for money who are you why do you deserve anything this is that entitlement dude and i'm not saying it's an entire generation there's people in my generation millennials gen z's boomers there's there's people of all ages creeds and sizes that are entitled it's a mindset you have to remember nobody is coming to save you bruv nobody and you should look at other people's success and it should light a fire under you to want to be better. I saw a video today. I was scrolling on Instagram. This kid is 21. He could have been, he could have been fake flexing. I don't know. He's got like three McLarens. He's like, I got a two and a half million dollar condo. And he's like, I just wanted to tell you that to piss you off. And it did. 
but it lit a fire under me. I was like, you know what? I was going to do four videos today. I'm going to do five videos today now. You know what I mean? Like I need to work harder. I need to do more. I need to work on another ebook. Like let other people being successful motivate you to want to do more. It's just so crazy to me. Cyber begging. I would never do that. It's wild to me. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to cop the ebook in the description, the four pillars of personality. It's been selling like crazy. You guys are getting a ton of value out of it. It makes you irresistible to women and respected by men. If you want to up your style game, I've got the four steps to style in the description as well. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Loki, did you have a good time? It looks like you had a good time. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.